Blame it all on my roots. I showed up in boots. Ruined your black tie fair. Last one to know. Last one to show. I was the last one you thought you'd see there. And I saw the surprise and the fear in his eyes when I took his glass of champagne. <laughs> but I want to recognize my family here as well. All of a sudden, Joel, his wife, Amy, and my grandson, Joel Five, and oh, wow. my granddaughter Amber and her husband Andrew. Yeah, he he's the fifth. I've always said we're not real original, but we're very consistent. <laughs> And it's my daughter Ginger and her husband Clay and my grandson Jackson, who is a star football player at Pearland. <laughs> and Ginger is a pediatric dentist, so that's quite an accomplishment. Absolutely. And Clay oh, yeah. is her great husband and father. Mm -hmm. The reason why Jackson is so good at what he does in football is his dad taught him a lot because he was a kicker. At one time, right. yeah. And then there's my son Brian. I'm proud of him as well. He has uh, half ownership in a business that's done extremely well. And where's Nicole? Yeah, there you are. <laughs> that's my son Brian and Nicole. Uh, she's a wonderful lady, and uh, we really thank the world to her. And uh, here's my grandson. Right over there. Come on. <laughs> yeah, Braden. Uh, he's quite the guy. And uh, let's see, who am I missing? Me? Yeah. <laughs> okay. And Landon. Yeah. Landon. Yeah. Yeah. So it's great to have them all here. And my son, well, I'm going to that. <laughs> I'm so happy that my sister Karen and her husband Mike are here from East Texas. Make the trip. Woo! And they were here to get here. <laughs> it's great to have friends here that I've known a long time. Appreciate y'all being here. And then my dear friends in the Exchange Club. The Exchange Club has been such a big part of my life the last 12, 13 years. And uh, I, I just can't tell you how much I enjoy it. And I enjoy the friendships that I've made here. So again, thanks to everyone for being here. Help me celebrate. And we'll have another one at 90. Good. But it's something you can't overlook. Especially when you're the youngest sister. <laughs> so I had to write the joy of 80 wonderful years. Aww. So Joel, you reached a milestone. But that's what they say. But oh, what an accomplishment. It's your 80th birthday. Woo! <laughs> 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 Wasn't it just yesterday when we were just kids? We thought youth would last forever. But you know, boy, it, it went away. It sure did. Life soon by so quickly, and here we are today. A joyous celebration on your 80th birthday. Though I'm not all that far behind. I'm getting older too. I'm not gonna say how. <laughs> oh yeah, I will. <laughs> but life is starting a new chapter without too much ado. I'm your little sister for 70 of these 80 years. There it is. <laughs> I hope my many antics didn't lead you to too, too many tears. <clears throat> Some may call you antique, but isn't that sarcastic? 
when what you really are is a finely tuned classic. One year better, built upon experiences life has given. One year better, and many super years that were all well living. There are a few better roles in your life than to be a dad. Your children are a blessing to you, the best to be had. What an amazing accomplishment to raise your children well. Your legacy is with them, with much pride we can tell. You've endured so many challenges occurring along the way, and yet arose to meet and beat them to enjoy a bright new day. So now you get to see our grand world, simply enjoying life. You get to see historic sites with your wonderful, loving wife. Oh, Amen. Wow. <laughs> All right. Eighty years begins great times to come with love by your side. Together, the future is yours. Each step as you two decide. Joel, as you look back over the many years that have passed, you have a lifetime of treasured memories that forever will last. Yep. And as family and friends gather together to celebrate with you, we all wish you a happy, blessed birthday and a life of love too. So we, as we've all joined together to celebrate your special day, we love you forever and wish you the happiest 80th birthday. Some people think those topics are taboo, but politics, they regulate and, and 
make a difference in your life. Sometimes you don't like it. Oh, thank you. Way to go, Brian. And of course, religion. You know, it's the most important thing you can talk about. Uh, it guides. It helps you uh, deal with the politicians and all their mistakes, and also gives you an idea of uh, you know what's in store for you after you you leave the earth. So that being said, at the risk of offend, offending people, I'm going to tell a religious joke. <laughs> all right, there's these two little boys, they're twins, about eight years old, Quell Valley, Texas. They are always getting into trouble. If something's missing or something gets broken, their mom gets called from somebody in Quell Valley. Um, fortunately, there's a new pastor in town, and he's known for being a good child dis disciplinarian. So the mom finds out about this pastor calls the pastor and says, would you mind taking care of my kids, or at least counseling, talk to them, some. And the pastor agrees. After he hears all the things going on with these kids, he says, I'll, I'll talk to them, but under one condition. I want to see them one at a time. So the next morning, one of the little boys goes to the church, walks into the uh, to the sanctuary, and the pastor is waiting for him. The pastor is a towering man with a booming voice. And when he sees the boy, he says, do you know where God is? The kid didn't know what to say. So the pastor approaches him, and he says, sit down, son. And he asks him again, do you know where God is? Well, the kid's kind of scared now, has no idea how to respond to this pastor. So the pastor gets the finger out and starts wagging the finger and says, where is God? Well, the kid's really scared, jumps out of the pew, runs out the church, runs home, runs through the house to his room, slams the door shut, his closet. So the other brother, the twin, sees what's happening in the house, so he goes to find out. He goes in the room, opens the closet door, and he sees his brother sitting in the closet. He says, what's going on? So the boy says, God's missing, and they think we did it. So I figured I'd play a little game. Oh, yeah. So it's going to be you on one team. And everybody else on the other. <laughs> That's a fair match. Yeah. So it's called Dad Quotes. You've already given up one of them, but we're going to do a few more. And the way this game works is I'm going to give a topic, and I'm going to give a little scenario to support that topic. And if you can figure out what the dad quote is, and what I mean by dad quote, we've heard it a few times, maybe a lot of times throughout our life. A lot more than want to. Well, no. yes. <laughs> if, if it wasn't for all those quotes, I wouldn't have come up with this game. So, the first topic we're going to talk about is hockey. So, if you know the quote, you're welcome to say it. But I'm going to go ahead and do the scenario. At some point, the audience has the first chance to say it. If they get it right, they get a point. If you get it right after they miss it, then you get a point. If they win, you buy everybody a drink. <laughs> yes, it's right. It's right. It's right. It's right. Yeah, right. do that. So the first topic is hockey. If anyone knows the quote, go ahead and say it. I need is a hot goalie. <laughs> <laughs> so what preface is that? We moved to Canada in 1980. Um, we didn't know anything about hockey until we got there. We learned to love hockey. Brian played hockey on our organized team. We played a lot of street hockey. Um, fell in love with the Edmonton Oilers. Still love the Edmonton Oilers. Um, 1982. Vancouver Canucks <coughs> made it to the playoffs with a losing record. And they made it all the way to the Stanley Cup. They lost the Stanley Cup, but hence the origin of his saying that we hear every hockey season, at least once if not more, is all you need is a hot All right, next. Next topic. <coughs> College football. Anyone know the quote? Yeah, I'm sorry about that. Everybody makes a bowl. <laughs> yeah. What? Everybody, Everybody makes a bowl. You're not very different. <laughs> 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 Pretty straightforward. So dad went to University of Houston. Uh, he's a cougar. He, um, not the type that chases Ron Younger people, but he's a cougar. He follows a team that, he follows a team that, that plays really good football until they're playing in an important game and they typically lose. Um, anyway, we were just talking about it the last time we had lunch. There are 43 bowl games this year, 43. And I think there's only 130 teams that qualify for those games. 
And inevitably, one of the teams this year, Rice Owls, five and seven record, they're going to make a bowl game. I think there's 18 or 19 teams with a six and six record. They're going to make a bowl game. So he's not wrong. Everyone makes a bowl game. All right. What's the next one? Oh, yeah. Volunteer work. This one might be a little bit more difficult. So dad volunteers a lot. Um, he volunteers at the exchange club. He volunteered when he was at his prior church um, in the Knights of Columbus, yeah. right? He um, volunteers at his current church. Um, fishing does, tournament. Fishing, what? <laughs> fishing <laughs> tournament. Yeah, the fishing tournament, right. When I moved here from Dallas, um, he helped me drive up to Dallas with a full load, a full truck, load it up, bring it down here, unload it, and then we moved to our house. He helped me unload a bunch of stuff too. And of course, when we're doing stuff like that, I'm always worried because he's a little older and he thinks he's <laughs> strong enough, but there's a saying he has. Anyone? No? I'm not as strong. Not as good as I want to. I may not be as good as I want to. But I'm as good as I want to. Oh! Okay, I'm going to be I got one more. This one's going to be a little more difficult. And again, at the risk of offending anyone, I'm going to. So, Dad um, used to be Catholic. He grew up in a Catholic church and he became Methodist. But when um, my grandpa died, he took my grandma. To church and her friend, what was her name? Oh, never mind. Good. You're 80 years old. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so he took grandma and her friend to church every Sunday and then took them out to eat. So that was pretty impressive. So, as, as I said, we talk about religion almost every time we get together. And when he was going to the Catholic church and, and called himself a Catholic, he would say, I'm a Catholic, but anyone? I don't believe in that extra stuff. Essentially, oh. I don't believe the Pope's infallible. I don't need to talk to a priest to talk to God. I don't pray to the saints or pray to the, the Mary, etc., etc. So, yeah. by the way, what do you call a sleepwalking nun? A, Ro a Roman Catholic. <laughs> By the way, Judy, thank you for putting, putting this together. This is pretty awesome. You know, <laughs> words that describe Judy, loving, compassionate, yeah. and probably the most important one, patient. <laughs> That's a requirement. <laughs> you want to hold her up, drink up? Happy birthday. Cheers. Happy birthday. Cheers. 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 Amber does not like, that's my daughter, she doesn't like talking in, first time, in front of people, but she did have something to say. <laughs> Happy birthday, Grandpa. I love you. You're a great grandpa. If you weren't my grandpa, I'd beat up my grandpa and find you. Aww. <laughs> Aww. She gets that violent streak from her mom. <laughs> <laughs> She's my first princess. Aww. <laughs> Middle son, I didn't get the name. Oh. <laughs> so, Travis, right? Travis was first. And then yeah, first but you were going to be Travis. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, congratulations, Dad. Happy birthday. Thank you, son. Been through hot rods when you were young, the Navy, uh, oil business for many years, graduated from University of Houston, uh, business degree. Well, yeah. well business, business, man. business, business management degree. degree. Worked in the oil business for how many years? Longer than I like to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> what did you always say about the oil business? It's like a roller coaster. Yeah. When it's up, it's great. When it's, it's down, fall, it's, it's so down, it's down. So, uh, and beat cancer? Beat cancer? Done that? Been a good father. Had some great grandkids. Supported your grandkids. No great grandkids yet. No great grandkids. Grandkids. No great grandkids yet. Hopefully sooner than later. But uh, it's been a great 80 years. 48 for me. Thank you for that. <laughs> um, <laughs> thank you for that. But I just want to do a toast to you, Dad. Love you. Merry Love Christmas. You Christmas. Merry Christmas and happy birthday. Merry Christmas. Happy birthday. Hi, I'm Ginger. I'm Dad's youngest. I'm the daughter. So um, I just wanted to say hi. Hi. I just wanted to say happy birthday, Dad. Um, I will say from our family, we all got dad's sense of humor. We <laughs> laugh a lot. We would get together and laugh. And I think that's the thing that I'm most grateful for from you is that and work ethic. You're a really strong worker. And so you've really taught us to 
get in there. I think all three of us and our kids, you know, we work hard and try to just do the best that we can. So, and you also walk a lot. Like I just am really impressed with the fact that you just stay healthy. I think that's really kept you young and busy. So, you gotta stay, gotta stay moving. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I, I completely, yeah, I got that from you as well. So, my daughter went to school for ten years to become a pediatric dentist. Worked hard, and she talk about a hard working young lady. That's her. And she has yeah. Love you too, He's a little proud. Yes. I'm proud of all of my kids. Yes, you They've are. They've all done well. You are. Really well. Brian is a partner in a business. Joel works for Homeland Security. A lot of y'all have met Joel before because he's talked to our club a couple of times. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, he's, had, he's had a presence. Uh, <laughs> he's like, I know. Of course, the grandchildren are Yes. They are. Yes. They are. Yes. So, again. Thank you. It started with you. Yeah. Yeah. I feel very blessed. I really do. Thank you. Okay. Uh, some of you people out there from uh, friends, family, exchange club. George, okay. All right. All right. Good. Oh, my grandson. Good. Aww. All right. This All is right. number five. Aww. So it took me a moment to get up here. My legs don't like me anymore. Um, but uh, there's no such thing as too young. Uh, but I have always looked up to my granddad. He's always been a huge supporter of everything I've ever done from baseball, football, rugby, whatever I decided to get my mind into. He was always there and always a supporter. Uh, one thing that I have gotten from him is my love of history and he has taught me more he has taught me more than most collegiate classes I have taken and I am incredibly grateful for you and everything that you've done for us he's uh, been there exactly. he lived it <laughs> Well, I mean, every once in a while, I do like to ask him how Abraham Lincoln was, and all in all, we've all gotten the same sense of humor from you, and we've all grown to love you and grown from you, and we really appreciate everything you've done for us. Happy birthday, so Dad. Yeah. Thank you, old man. <laughs> hey, don't say that too much. No. Aww. I'm just getting started. <clears throat> I'm Rusty Lamb, and uh, I wanted to stand up and uh, just uh, tell, uh, tell how much we, uh, with the Exchange Club, and then personally, in the last couple of years, that I know that Joel has uh, given his heart and soul to the club. And I know there's a lot of people in this room that would agree with me. Um, I've never met a man that never said no. The club has asked him to stay on. He was club president twice, and because no one kind of came through, and he did it, and he did it <coughs> wholeheartedly. I know that uh, when Alyssa took over, he really supported Alyssa, and he supported everybody in the club. And I know right now with Jake being the current president that he has supported the board of directors and everybody. Uh, I just can't, I can't say enough about what kind of man he is and how he has lived his life. Um, there are so many people that talk about how great they are. Then there are people like Joe who live it every day. So thank you, Joe. Thank you, Rusty. Wow. Thank you. first group of ladies that joined the Exchange Club back in 2011 and Joel I believe you were president then yes yes, yes. and um, and we were and I was terrified because this had always been the men's club so you know I was telling you okay what's gonna happen here and he took me right in to be a board member and then I just kind of went through everything and he was always so supportive and when it was my turn to be president I'm like I can't 
can't do this. I can't do this. I'm a woman and, and COVID hit. But Joel was like, you can do it. You can do it. He's always there with the hug. He's always there with the kiss. He's always got a joke, just like his family has said. He just makes you feel special. And with him supporting you, you just can't go wrong. So, and Judy's <laughs> always right there too. And like Rusty said, they're always there to do anything that needs to be done. Anytime anything needs to be done. And you couldn't find a better couple and more loving couple and a sweeter couple. And I'm just happy to be part of your outer circle of friends. Oh. 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 Melissa was a great president. Yes. She did a wonderful job. Indeed. She does. She did wonderful everything she did. Okay. I think that's enough. Before everybody goes to sleep. Well, I um, appreciate all of you today, and we're going to have cake in just a few minutes. <laughs>